Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Dredge. I finally had a chance to go back and edit some of the previous parts, and while I'm no less addicted, looking in hindsight and being able to see my progression objectively, I think it's pretty clear that I haven't been upgrading my ship as much as I should be. I caused real problems at Gale Cliffs, and I think right now, my focus should be more on exploring areas that aren't necessarily important on the map. I mean, there's a whole lot of these rocks off in the waters, and, and maybe a whole lot of wrecks to salvage as well. And besides, I could certainly use the storage space for some of the bigger catches that are appearing. And not to mention, I really feel like I'm gonna need the, uh, the extra edge when it comes to the rest of my gear. Oh, now, what are you? Now, I've started to speculate that uh, these blue lights indicate that... Ooh. What is that over there? That's nuts. That's like some kind of big, like, temple or something, and what looks like a light below it. Oh, our exploring is paying off already, and this is up in the Devil's Spine. Oh, by making our way through these rocks close to Little Marrow, we're actually already close to this other place. Uh, it's not where we're heading tonight, but uh, maybe it's something worth checking out? I don't like that sound. Yep, that's what I thought. Oh my god. That was- okay! I- I had killed my lights to try and hide from the angler, but... That was an actual ghost ship. Wait, okay, so I think... I think there might be a variety of such things then, I mean... Oh, look, there's a sea turtle. Okay, I'm just- uh, I'm really going like, ooh, piece candy, ooh, piece candy. That's what happens when you explore for ten seconds. Why haven't I been doing more of this the whole game? Okay, uh, let me try and organize my thoughts here. That might be the second ghost ship we've encountered, actually, because remember, a couple episodes ago, there was also the one that seemed to slowly lower itself below the waves, and now this one just vanishing in the fog? That's the thing. These seas are home to many dangers, but sometimes you just see something weird. Okay, I guess I must have accidentally sold the signet ring at some point. Oh, that's really annoying. It is so easy to accidentally sell stuff in this game. You see, I feel like my main problem thus far... You see, I feel like my main problem thus far is that I've kind of been rushing through the relic story, expecting it to guide me along, when what I really should be doing is indulging in that sense of exploration. I mean, for all the strange creatures and locations we've been finding, I'm still not progressing the way I should, and I think it's because the game wants me to explore these little aisles more. I mean, how many books have been given to us by all the crazy characters we meet out here? It's trying to reward us for going out of our way, not just rushing through. And so I think what I'm going to do is spend a little bit more time upgrading, maybe even up to the point of the next hull, before I even think about uh, going for the next objective. You hear that sound? Uh, something else I've realized is that I really need to start sleeping more. I mean, I'm getting attacked a lot more than I need to, and I think it's because I just don't sleep, you know? And I mean, how can I? This is all so exciting, and there's so much to see. And the most exciting time to be out here is during the night. But I suppose it would still do me some good. Anyway, if we go to the dry dock, we should now have the materials to, whoops, to complete this. And we'll purchase that upgrade for $300, and we get some new cargo slots. I don't think we've yet been to these islands, and... They are in the direction of our objective. I think part of the problem is that while fish respawn... What was that? 
Well, carrying on. Well, fish respawn. I don't think uh, I don't think dredge materials do. So that's something that's really meant to keep us moving about. That's the real reward for exploration, is being able to upgrade our ship. Oh no, these rocks look like a pretty nice place to build a home if I didn't already have one with the builder. Uh, which, speaking of, I should probably check up on her and see uh, what benefits we get from having that house. I mean, besides a port in the storm to rest in, which is quite valuable all its own. Old iron chain. Hmm. Anytime something seems like junk, I'm so afraid to sell it now and... Well, call it sailor superstition. By accidentally losing the signet ring, I can't help but think I brought bad luck upon myself. Ooh, you guys look like something new. Oh, and a new mechanic! Press F when it aligns to reel faster. Okay, and we get a blackfin tuna. These popular sport fish can prove challenging to catch. Their strong, muscular bodies make for good eating. And we have an aberration. Razor mouth tuna. Half teeth, half muscle. This fish's sole purpose is the pursuit of its unfortunate prey. I mean, one thing in common, it seems like uh, the aberrations are almost entirely predators. Hmm, it seems we have the option to examine this wreck, the one near death, who's undoubtedly quite hungry by now. A rotten mast lays down on this island, half hidden by the foliage. At its base, an old boat is cracked in two. Let's look inside. Ooh, tons of stuff here, including what we need to finish upgrading our ship and a research part. Uh, all good things. Yeah, I, I really like how this game gives you things to explore that aren't necessarily the charted islands. I mean, even still, there's stuff out here on the way to Gale Cliffs, things we haven't seen before. But it doesn't draw your attention to them on the map. It actually encourages you to go, hey, you want to know what's there? Go see for yourself. Which is cool, because when I saw that this game took place in the modern day, or, well, you know, at least like the earlier half of the 1900s, I was kind of worried that it would lose some of that spirit of adventure. That has not been the case at all. And even more shipwrecks over here, and... There's still lights on in this one. Is somebody home? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, you even lured me in with, like, an indicator that I could examine it! Alright, screw you then! Oh, look at that, it's like a some kind of crab creature that's made its home within the wreck. Although that doesn't explain the ghost lights. Well, can I have this at the very least? A rotting chest peeks out from the skeleton of a wrecked ship. Yeah, I'm gonna look inside, and we find a whole bunch more. Uh, stick you there, and you there, and you there. Lots of trinkets for the trinket salesman. But I think at this hour, it's in our best interest to start heading for Gale Cliffs again. Uh, it's so cool how through your adventures... You know, the people that were just plainly quest givers start to feel like old friends. That's the amazing thing about this game, is that you really do start to feel like an old sailor. You come in not knowing anything, scared of everything, and eventually you start to really feel like you know your stuff. You start to feel like you know people all over, like you've been to all these distant lands, even though none of the travel really takes all that long. Oh, I'm also going to start showing more sailing, even if I'm not talking much. I mean, even if it means the episodes are going to be a little bit longer. Looking back and editing, I really do feel like it's just way too much going back and forth and showing UI. And that's not what this game is all about. Anyway, let's throw on that cloth, purchase upgrade, and now we have more rod spaces as well. And we could get... We could get more engine slots. I don't think that'll enable us to actually upgrade. 
Uh, but we can get a lot closer. It's not even an expensive upgrade. Ah, yes, we have just the right amount. $75, and we're good. And now we just have to gather a bunch of stuff, including something we've never seen before for the Tier 3 upgrade. Oh, a feature I've just noticed is how the features of the terrain are actually obscured in the fog, except where there's lights. So those lights, too, actually reveal features of the environment. That is so cool. And goes even further to show Port as safe haven. Really making it feel that way, the way you're meant to feel about it through the mechanics of the game instead of just through the story. Now, I've made up my mind that I really should also be, uh, be fishing in ways that I haven't been for a while. Dropping more crab pots. I thought I had another crab pot, uh, but it's broken. Dropping crab pots everywhere and doing more trawling. I, I feel like I've been neglecting so many aspects of this game, and I really want to take that back. Huh, now, it, it seems, though, that at night, around the Gale Cliffs, there's little to be done in the way of trawling, uh, as far as even deep or shallow water, but we have caught ourselves a new species, a Black Sea Bass. Well, it's another thing for the encyclopedia, at least. Maybe we can get a little more? The dark bands on its flanks help it camouflage, making this a fearsome night predator. If you're a small shrimp. Ah, we've got a new crab. Rock crab. A popular crab for eating. Alright, very good, very good. Yeah, I see you're still hanging around. I don't really feel like we need the trawling net anymore, so... Or at least not for the time being, so... I'm just gonna switch back to the old rod... Oh, we can actually buy research parts and some scavengeables. Now, they're expensive, so I don't really feel like I need it at the moment, but were there to be anything we're desperate for... Well, that is something we can do. Now, let us test our theory that aberrations can be found in these things. There it is, <laughs> right away. Didn't even play us a sound that time. Now I'll tell you something else I noticed in editing. A couple episodes ago, we were approached by the lighthouse keeper saying that the engine of my boat sounded like someone she used to know. But the description says, peculiar engine. Maybe this engine used to, like, belong to that person? I mean, we weren't exactly told where this ship came from, but, uh, I mean, it did seem to be a hand-me-down. So how foolish would it be to sail into this waterfall? Like, honestly. It would go real slowly. Oh my god, there actually is something! And it's treasure! Ooh, and, and, and something to fish. An abyssal something. That thing looks huge. I don't know if we're going to have the space for this. Oh, I am so glad that random thing worked out. Ooh. Okay, uh, maybe we'll have to give up. Oh, no, we can place that there. Look at you. You are huge. Orfish, you're one of the ones we're looking for! A splendorous, crested sea serpent. The length of its massive body catches the light, shimmering with iridescence. Oh, this is so cool! A rotten chest sits atop a pile of rubble at the back of the cave. Right, let's look inside. And there's some of what we were looking for. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to come back for that big bag later. But man, what a haul. Uh, we gotta get this thing back to the merchant before it spoils. I would get rid of the metal scraps, but it seems like a really bad idea to destroy, like, the limited salvageables. We've gotta race ourselves back to that merchant because uh, we've got something for her. 
Of course, that won't complete the quest. We still have other things we need to find for her. Now, I can sell it to you for $250. Uh, but, of course, that's not what we're trying to do. About those rare fish you wanted me to find, I found an ore fish. That's great news. I'll add it to my records. Here, take this. I'm sure you'll find some use for it. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, but I'll have to ask around for the other ones. However, it doesn't look like you need to take it. You just wanted to know where it was. So we can have our cake and eat it too with this thing. Awesome! Now all we need is some cloth and we will have our hull three. And open up a whole lot of new upgrades in the process. Imagine if, as like a late game reward, we can actually start like catching some of these deep sea leviathans. That would be amazing. And it's probably beyond the scope of what this game is going for, but still pretty cool. And imagine charging the townspeople for our services. Although at this point I'm basically suggesting the Witcher Nautical Edition. Dude, the Witcher Nautical Edition would be such a cool thing. What am I even talking about? And there we find some cloth. Yeah, I've just... I've been neglecting dredging so much more for this entire game than I should have been. It's just it always felt like there were so many more interesting things to do, you know? Species to catch, items to sell, things to learn. Oh, why didn't this game tell me there was going to be so much dredging involved? Wow, we've actually completely filled up our storage. Well, all the better to spend on our upgrades. And all we need are three of these, which is exactly what we found out there. And that is that. For a mere $800, really blowing through all that money we've been earning throughout the game, I figured I was suspiciously rich. But we gain nine new cargo spaces and can sustain an additional impact. Now I could actually get this crazy thing, but tell you what, 36 plus 15? I'm thinking I actually just test my theory from before and buy an improved outboard engine to go alongside this thing and see if they don't stack. Not to mention give redundancy in case of damage. Actually, for, for only a little bit less speed, we could save the money and use that mysterious peculiar engine. Okay, you know what? Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, we'll take it out of storage. And stick this right in there. Okay, and now we've got a truly formidable vessel. Let's rest and head back home. And it's kind of hard to tell if the speed is stacking, but we do definitely seem to be moving at quite a pace. Yes, thank you, dolphins, for the compliments. I somehow hadn't noticed this little thing before in the back of uh, Greater Marrow. But let's see what it wants. It looks like it's gonna want... Oh, probably those carp, right? Oh man, we went from having no storage space to having tons of storage space and... We just got the perfect packing achievement for, uh, I had to look at that before and I thought there's no way I'm ever going to get that. Oh, the progression in this game is so cool. I feel like once I actually sat down and started exploring, even though I was having fun before, it's really starting to open up to me. Yeah, just casually sell off our hundreds of dollars worth of fish. And we're going to need it, honestly, with some of these upgrades. There we go, Cobb. That's what we're looking for. I know I'm kind of meandering around, but I really, really want to make sure not only that I'm ready, but also that uh, I learn what some of these things do. Because so often in a Let's Play, I ignore things you don't really have to worry about, and then by the end of the game, I'm like, oh wow, that could have really helped me. And I think from the look of that place, we're actually going to need a bunch of these guys, but first let's just bring them over and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to have to Tetris this thing. That's what this is, huh? Tetris puzzle? Okay, right there, and right there, and then the last two should stack neatly in there. We just need to find two more using our telescope. There we 
go. Now, what happens if we make this offering? A wave washes over the fish, sweeping them away. When the water recedes, you notice something is lodged against the rock. Sinew spindle. A headline reel wrapped in a length of stretchy sinew. Sinew? One end is grafted to a crude bone hook, which improves our fishing speed. Uh, well, maybe we'll end up selling it, but that's quite a weird thing we've got there. Huh. Doesn't seem particularly worth the inventory space, but it's still a cool find, and well, now we know we can get some equipment here. It doesn't do much for us now, but uh, this is probably meant to be like an early game discovery, and I know the other islands had these things. A new, a new aberration. I think the, the blue lights definitely do indicate new aberrations, or at least existing ones. A spine broken with sharp angles and crooked curves. A row of teeth bent on revenge. Man, revenge against what? You're an eel. What do you have to be pissed about? I mean, besides being an eel. We can upgrade our light slots just to sort of free up the space. But actually, I don't think we're going to be able to do much with that, because if we look at our ship composition, it's kind of in like an L shape. And the next light is, well, this thing. Anyway, the mayor did tell us that this place that we're heading is actually mostly forested. It seems we're encountering sailfish out here as well, which shows that they're not just in the direction of Gale Cliffs. And it seems like these deep sea species, these open ocean species, can be found all about. But what is that? Some huge tower, maybe even a former lighthouse off in the distance. Oh wait, I think I'm actually, I think I'm actually turned around. If we have a look, yeah, oh wow, it's actually very easy to lose your sense of direction out here. I've been heading, heading towards uh, Devil's Spine, when I should be heading over here towards Twisted Strand. The only reason I recognized it is because I could see the columns from before. Alright, let's head out and uh, keep a lookout for any exotic fishing we can do out here. Exotic, of course, in this case, just meaning everything I haven't found before. <gasps> That'll never not be all at once terrifying and super cool. Now, what are what are what are you guys? Are you something I've seen before? Ah, uh, yes, you are. Blackfin tuna. It seems like you guys are actually like everywhere, really. Now, I know I saw lights in this direction the other night. And it looks like... Oh, is that our old friend the Merchant? And is that our old friend somebody else? There does appear to be a light on... on the bridge of that boat. So we'll definitely have to head over there and check it out. And even though it's foolish for the sake of atmospherics... I think we do it at night. Ah, uh, there you go, there go your lights. I was getting really worried that something had happened to you. Ah, uh, you have no idea how glad I am to see you. Hey again, come by for a chat? What can you tell me about Twisted Strand? Not much, to be honest. I had gone inside just the once. I sailed into that lagoon behind us and saw I could go left, right, or straight ahead. Something about the place seemed... off. Through the fog, it looked like the trees were... moving. I can't explain it. I turned around and sailed right back out. That's a little bit ominous, considering there's nothing but trees here. I've been looking out for threats from below, but what about from above? What do we even do about that? I sometimes use this spot to rest up for a few days. The sunrises are particularly striking through the haze. Yeah, I noticed that. Never do any regular business here, of course. 
So there's no one around but the ghosts on these wrecked boats. I could sleep the night here, but I'm far, far too curious. Now I can see messages in a bottle at different places. I think there might have been one behind us as well. But if we come this way, I want to find that wrecked boat. And it looks like there's actually something up on land. There's some kind of other wreck there. What is that? Oh, that's an airplane! Well, we could dredge here. And I now know that uh, this gold means that we'll find something important there. Uh, which means we're not selling whatever we bring up. Dog tags. A pair of dog tags. A name, number, and address is printed in duplicate. Alright, well, somebody will definitely want this. That's going into storage so it doesn't accidentally get sold. More salvage to dredge all around. And potentially somebody home. And nope, it's another one of you guys. Go, 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 go. Oh, very nearly struck the rocks there. Okay. So that was not a one-off thing. If you see a ship on the rocks with its lights on, stay away. It doesn't mean survivors. It means something much worse. Okay, and as suspected, this is a mangrove biome. So we'll have to purchase that upgrade, which we already have the ability to do. Uh, research parts are so hard to come by that that's, uh, it's really stupid that I can't just skip ahead if I have the stuff. But alright, we'll buy our mangrove line. Now that goes there. And we can begin catching some of the species that are out here. However, as our sanity is not in the best of shape, I think we wait for morning and do a little bit of exploring. Oh, but this fog that hangs over the islands, it, it seems to be ever-present. Uh, that's going to make this not only difficult to navigate, but quite a bit more spooky and dangerous as well. But I don't know that we really have a choice. Now, what do we find here? A uh, gray mullet. And what are you? A plain fish, often found in sandy or muddy areas. One of few species that can survive in brackish water. Let's head further in and see what we can find. You guys might... Oh no, you're something different. Sergeant fish. I'm hearing something. What are you? What are you? I get the feeling that you do not want me to approach. So I won't. There's got to be some way to get around you. I'm not even going to bother trying to engage with you until I figure out what the trick of this place is. That is a straight up Alan the Gator. But do you have legs? I mean, you're huge. Look at you compared to my boat. Do you have legs or are you just like some kind of scaly eel thing? You don't seem all that interested in me. Yeah. <laughs> you making those noises made me wonder if you don't wait for me to forget about you and then turn around, but there's yet another wrecked plane. Okay, well, let's begin the search once more. Oh, was a war fought here? It's like multiple missing flights. Mortar barrel. Maybe maybe we'll have to use some artillery to clear through this place. So thorough are the threats. Even through the dense fog, Greater Marrow's light shines. That thing is truly powerful. I need one of those for my boat. But anyway, I've got some prices to check. Uh, you are worth 32 and you 17. Not much, but certainly nice. And everything else we found will be moved to storage. Unfortunately, as much as I hate it, I do have to come out at night to see what species arrive now. There should be some research parts here, but we'll have to remember 
that this little pass is off limits. A natural trap for any prey coming through. I wonder if that first ship that it's wearing wasn't just the result of some unfortunate person coming through without having to deal with its camouflage. But there does appear to be some species of eel in the water. Mangrove, so we know it's not one of the encountered species from before. Longfin eel. There we go. Oh, you are a big boy. A long eel with delicate fins. Spends the day coiled around the roots of the mangrove trees, but emerges at night to hunt. Uh, there's something I just find intrinsically more fascinating about the nocturnal species. Let's continue our search. Now it seems like, much like the other places, this whole place is an island chain, but with a somewhat sealed in interior. An interior protected by something unique. Although what that thing is, I have yet to see. Let's just continue avoiding the whispers at sea and see what else we can find. Circling the islands is about all we can do at the moment. Is there something... Is there something out there? It looks like there is. Maybe something... Some kind of barrier that can be blown with explosives? See, the thing is, out in a place like this, there's no buoys to give us momentary respite. If we're stuck, we're stuck. And the remains of an old dock and campsite, suggesting we're not the first to inhabit this place, but you know, besides the merchants, certainly currently the only ones. And going around the outer edge will certainly be beneficial. Maybe we can find even more wrecked planes. No, I don't have time for you. And it's never been clearly explained, but I'm under the assumption that... Worse, worse sanity means more attacks like this! Okay, we are not going in this way. We are not going in this way. Are you attacking because of sanity? No, I think you're an intrinsic part of this area. Okay, well now we know what she meant by the trees moved. Uh, can we find something new here? Ooh, we can get a big one. Oh, and it's a prized aberration, gleaming mullet. Scales swollen into large clustered pustules. A golden liquid shimmers from within. Gross. All right, I think day is coming and I'm gonna start speeding back. Oh, great, it's you guys. Nope, 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 nope. I cannot lose my stuff. I don't want to lose this aberration. Nope, go away. Uh, gray mullet, fine. You can have that one. Dock, dock, dock. And don't get me while I'm docking. Uh, fish market. What will you give me for these guys? Uh, they're worth a bit. As are you. All right, and that'll just about pay for our repairs. Now, if I ask you about the Goliath tigerfish, you say that they hunt in murky, swampy waters using trees as cover. So I'm thinking that this has got to be it. Like, they've got to be here. And as for these guys, well, you don't know where they might be. You say primordial feel, which could indicate um, the area... I forget what it's called, but the area with that huge uh, octopus creature. And as for the rest... But there is also that unexplored territory still. I do see a plane back there. And this looks like the remains of some big contraption. You don't want me going that way. And those bioluminescent mushrooms seem to indicate where you reside. Maybe I can rush in? Maybe you don't want me to do that. But I can grab this. No idea. I keep hearing sounds all around me, and oh, that message in a bottle is just question mark, question mark, question mark. A sign pointing the way with a lit lantern. Meaning somebody's here right now. Of course, it's leading me right in the direction where that creature was. 
Huh, maybe those pilots aren't actually dead. It feels like years since I've been warm. I do not expect him to write. I just need to know that he thinks of me from time to time. He must return. More angry smudging follows. I have written him another letter. This will be the last one. Hmm. Well, now I'm even more curious than I previously was. Let's head on in. And maybe with Banish at the ready. Although the Collector did specify it gets rid of most species, not necessarily all. This actually looks like it may be some kind of like trap meant to snare something from beneath. Now, which way are you pointing? This way. You this way? Should I not be trusting you? Should I not be trusting you at all? It sort of feels like that. It sort of feels like the more obvious something is, the less I should listen to it, but we find yet a third aircraft wreck and an active fire. Are we about to make somebody's day? Look at you. A large man is watching you through the billowing smoke of the campfire, idly carving away at a wooden stake. He stands as you pull ashore. Stranger, from that look on your face, I'd say you were encountered the local wretches. Take a seat. Uh, you don't seem that excited to see me. You actually seem like you're doing just fine right here. You join him by the fire. I've been trying to rid them from this accursed jungle ever since we wrecked here. The boys called them mind suckers. On account of them, well, affecting the mind. They need to see things. Do things. I'd ask you for safe passage away from here. But not until after I've avenged my squadron. What happened to them? A number of us went down in the fog. Crashing into trees or ditching into the water. Those of us that survived rallied here under the bows of this giant tree. But it offered us scant protection. Before help could arrive, our numbers quickly dwindled, picked off by the fiends in the forest. I had met a few would-be rescuers over the years, but none would help in my fight. Are you any different? I can help. <laughs> I figured you'd be up for it. You... You have the look. Listen up. First, we need to find the lost pieces of my squadron's mortar. We'll then use that to bombard the beasts. I have more help than you realize. Other planes went down to the north and east of where we are now. I'll mark the possible crash sites on your map. You can go and see what you can salvage. Hmm? How will you honor your squad mates? I've hung a few of their dog tags up on the tree behind me, and it seemed fitting enough. But I've only got tags from the ones I... You must understand, I never found all their bodies. If you happen to find any of their dog tags, I could add them to the tree with their brothers. I have a number of mechanical doodads that you might find useful. Here, take this one. In good faith. I'll give you more for each tag you bring me. Alright. Now, before I start helping you, though, I'll need to know more about these mind suckers. Devilish creatures through and through. They'll stalk you along the waterways and emerge suddenly, screeching their terrible song. The first time it happened to me, I saw shadows of my squad mates reaching out to me in a feverish dream. When I finally snapped out of it, I was covered in bloody scratches. They must have sent me running through the foliage. Since then, I've done my best to avoid the fiends. Their senses seem to be based on movement, so move carefully. Okay, so that's how we navigate. Are there any shipwrecks around here? No. Anything that meets its end here is quickly swallowed by the silt. 
Alright, well, let's try not to end up like them, then. We've got things to do. Actually, can I access my storage here? I didn't see. Yeah, I can. Okay, I've got a couple of things for you right off the bat. First of all, the dog tags of one of your buddies, and second, the mortal ba the mortar barrel, sorry, with attached sight. How are things going? Well, first of all, I found some dog tags. Let me see. There you go. I... Thank you. I'll hang them on the tree. Here. As promised. And I found some parts of the mortar. You found one component, but it's still missing a piece. Nearly there. Keep looking. Okay, great. You know, I've completely forgotten what my own quest was even about, the search for the relics. I don't even remember what the Collector is offering me in return. I've gotten far more invested in the stories of all these people we've helped along the way. Now that looks like something that can be blown open. Actually, yeah, I should go back. I think I still have some explosives in my storage. Now, according to this, there is another camp right around the way from here. You would think making the trek on land would be better, but uh, even what this guy's been through, maybe that's less than advisable. We can make it a little bit easier by boat. A pile of loose debris could be cleared to make a shortcut. Definitely benefiting from these things still. And let's just hope that doesn't count as movement. It was certainly noise. And another message in a bottle. Tattered receipt. December 22nd, 1926, Goldsmith and Son, Little Marrow, received the sum of $50,000 in exchange for one silver necklace with emeralds on silver mounting. Received a further $3 for a custom engraving on reverse of mounting. Customer to return tomorrow for collection. Engraving is to be as follows. For J, my shining star. Have we heard of a J before? Okay, well, let's continue looking. There should be a camp in here somewhere. We we'll want to keep slow so those things don't get us, but also fast enough that we don't get snared by these trees that rise up from below. And it's making me real nervous, the setting sun and the sounds of the creaking around me. Uh, what are you guys? Ooh, a gar. These things are so freaky in real life. An exceptionally long and slender fish. Strong scales stretch down the length of its body. Okay, where is that camp? We're actually going the wrong way. Well, let's just keep the one of you and turn around. There's another one of your arrows. So maybe that tree falling was actually fairly recent. Slowly and steadily, which costs us time. But hopefully not too much now. What are you? You're something different as well. Ah, a... What are you? Tarpon. A powerful fish capable of bursts of energy. Well suited to dashing into the mangrove roots to take cover. Well, not well suited enough for me. But there may be an aberration here, so I've got to keep looking. There we go. Blistered tarpon. Scales given way to bubbling flesh. A surface dweller singled out and cleansed by the sun. These descriptions are less than scientific, but god, I love them. I'm just really fine-tuning my direction here. Ah, uh, here's something. Well, let's begin the dredge. This must be the base of the mortar. There we go. Uh, mortar frame. The metallic base and frame of a portable mortar. Only slightly rusted. Oh, you're something new as well. Uh, I might have to get rid of something. I'm just, I'm so excited finding all these new species. Catfish. 
Uh, these things are also among the family of things I consider to be freaky in real life. Uh, okay, we can we can get rid of something, surely. Let's get out of here. We actually don't have a lot of time, and I don't want these things going stale on me. Uh, maybe, I mean, there's all these archways everywhere, and sure, they could be dangerous. I was going to say, maybe I'm meant to learn from the fish. Maybe I'm meant to hide amongst them. Maybe that can help. Uh, look at Greater Marrow's light piercing through the trees. Let's wait for it to come around again. Even all this way over here, it still can find us. Yeah, but it doesn't offer much protection, I'm afraid. Through here should be the way. Uh, you'll actually... You'll open and close certain areas at will. And we just need to get out of here. We just need to get out of here and we'll worry about it in the morning. I have got a lot of new things for you, and it would seem they're all still fresh. Most valuable thing being you guys. Okay. Let us head back to our friends. Oh, there's your attack. There's your attack. Okay, outrun, outrun, outrun. Uh, but that's easier said than done in these narrow waterways. Go, 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 go. Uh, it damaged us, but we're still okay. Oh, uh, good God. You guys definitely weren't there before. Does that mean you can appear anywhere? Certainly rattled our sanity. I might have to sleep here, but I've got your stuff. I found more parts of the mortar. That's a lot. Now, while I work on assembling the mortar... You can get started on the next phase of the plan. You may have noticed some contraptions in the lagoons around here. I've assembled those traps for the mine suckers. We just need to lure them in there. Once they're in, you see, I can fire on them with our new mortar. And that'll be the end of them. No more nightmares. I'll mark the locations of the traps on your map. Got it? Okay, but how do we get them in there? They're attracted to some very specific types of bait. Your skills will come in handy here yet again. You got everything? I, I don't know what the bait is yet. Is it safe? <laughs> of course not. How do you make the traps? With patience. The creatures only seem to sense movement. So when everyone was close, I froze. We need to make three special baits from different combinations of fish. Okay, well, what's the first? This one takes three fish from the area. Okay, so that's going to be you, you, and you. So as expected, you guys go here. And now we got to find another one of these guys. So I take it these are the locations of the different traps. I'm just got to find the rest of those fish. While I'm out here, I'm just going to be catching whatever I can find under the assumption that maybe I can do something with all of them. I mean, presumably just about every native fish species is going to be necessary. Now, I know that uh, stopping causes them to leave me alone. But what about moving more slowly, more... Sporadically. Uh, there's something we need. Alright. First trap, able to be completed. That should do it. I'll just mix these in and... Here. Load this into a trap and then get well clear from it. When the trap springs, I'll fire upon it with a mortar. Make sure you bring back proof that the thing's really dead, you hear? Okay, well, there's our chum bucket. Uh, now I'm gonna do that now, but what about the second one? Uh, a couple of these guys as well. Pungent bait. Foul-smelling mixture of fish and something else. The airman says this should attract the beasts in Twisted Strand. 
I should be careful indeed. Alright, I've got something for you. A large cage is suspended over the water. A small receptacle is floating underneath. Let's load it up and get out of here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Gotcha! And stop and fire that mortar, please! And that is one explodey mind sucker. Let's just go over here and scoop its goop. Inside is the obliterated corpse of a mind sucker. The airman will be expecting proof of your success. A pale and bloodied slab. Its smell is acrid and metallic. The rest of the carcass sinks out of sight. Well, we won't be able to sell it for ourselves. First of all, I wonder if these things get an encyclopedia entry. Uh, no such luck, it seems. Although maybe? I'll check later. In any case, we've got to go back and report our proof. I, I wonder if that doesn't mean that like, they just won't show up in this area anymore. Like, can we truly eliminate this danger? Because if so, that would be a first. But then again, each area has been about overcoming the native danger. How are things going? I have a creature corpse to show you. Let's see it then. You hand the tattered lump of flesh to the airman. It's almost unrecognizable. But you both know it couldn't have belonged to anything else. He pokes at it with its knife, testing the rubbery meat. He seems satisfied. Yep, this is one of the beasts. Progress at last. More to go, though. Alright. Now, according to this, the catfish is nocturnal, so being out at night is going to be a necessity, sadly. I believe we found them in the same direction as the gar, and those other smaller fish are actually a lot more common pretty much everywhere, so I'm not too worried about finding them. Although, I don't seem to be finding very much of anything right now. The constant sound of the twisting of the branches is really nerve-wracking, knowing what's out here. As we get farther in than we've ever been before, we find yet another one of these things. I just heard you breach the surface. Uh, those glowing runes look like eyes, with the bottom being like a mouth and a twisted grin. Uh, a crooked boulder with a small, simple platform at its base. The twisted shape of a deformed fish is barely recognizable. Carved into the rock face. Okay, so you want aberrations, and a whole lot of them. Okay, let's keep having a look around. We've got catfish right here. I just got an achievement for catching 250 fish using rods. Neato. But I, uh, we're getting a ton of these things, but I want the aberration. There we go. Twin deal. Oh, look at you. It's a push me, pull you. Endlessly pulling away, but torn apart. They would surely perish. Two spiteful siblings splitting at the seams. There's you out there. These gator things are super creepy to me, and they haven't even done anything to me. You know, it's going to be real not easy to actually lay you guys together. 
but presumably you'll take any aberration. Oh, you only needed the one. Tendon rod. Mechanisms of brutality bound by three gouging, flaying hooks. An ungodly fishing device. An ungodly shape as well. Significant improvement to speed, but can I put it in storage? Yeah, I can, actually. I've got everything I need for the second set of bait. There we go. And we get some of that. Now, I've caught a couple of other fish, and we'll find out if we need them for the last one. Ah, uh, a couple of eels. Well, that requires us to wait until nightfall again. But in the meantime, we can uh, pass that time by putting the other trap in. Now, where do we have to go for that? Directly to our south. I know for a fact that the eels congregate under this archway at night. I did observe that last night. So if we come through here, I'm actually real concerned about the little cove we're entering into. Uh, because to my eye, that ring looks like a death trap. So let's move as slowly and as carefully as we can. Because we're definitely going to be paid a visit while we're doing this. Nope, nope, you don't see anything. You don't see a thing. I'm gonna wait for you to go beneath the waves. And we're just gonna load it up and back out of here. Ah, uh, you came from closer than I expected. Come on, let's go. Let's go. And gotcha. And trap, and here comes the artillery. Making this place safer by the day. And that's the thing, is that, I mean, in this case, we're literally clearing the place out. But for the most part, it's about taming the wilderness. Not through literally taming it, but by learning how to work within it. And in some cases, you know, learning to adapt against it. It's not a typical environmentalist story of we're wrong for even existing in this environment. It's just we have to learn the rules and, well, maybe sometimes those rules can be exploited in our favor. Got another creature corpse for you. He gives it a few slashes with a knife. It wobbles a little. Another one taken care of. One remains by my count. Let's finish this. I just can't wait to take you home. I mean, you deserve it after all this time. But maybe we can also hang around and try and find more of those dog tags. I don't know where else we'd find them, but maybe it's worth having a look, even if I can get the bait fairly easily. Well, I found my eel. Now all that remains is to make our way back. These mushrooms are really interesting. They seem to glow in colors and patterns very similar to those of the mine suckers themselves. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. I mean, maybe they're not, like, an aquatic species at all. I mean, clearly they're aquatic, but maybe they're not actually, you know, like, fish. They evoke images of octopi at first, you know, having tentacles and all, but... Well, actually, they're not tentacles. That seems to be their whole body. In any case, I've got the final bait, and maybe we'll make this a night mission. Too long, thin eel for you. And let's do this. I love how the bucket is crudely labeled three. All right, right back to where we just came from. Of course, at night, it is going to be significantly more dangerous to navigate these waters. Not to mention our ever-decreasing sanity, but the final trap should be right ahead, which of course means that one of these guys is very nearby. 
So we'll have to be real careful about what angle we approach this from. Let's load it up. And start backing away, yep. Take the bait. What if the last one just didn't do it? Rule of threes, the last one is where a twist happens. And good riddance. And we no longer have to worry about these things. The trees themselves... Well, maybe still. Inside is the obliterated corpse of a mind sucker. The airman will be expecting proof of your success. And the rest sinks out of sight. I gotta say, I, I mean, I knocked some of it out of the way early, but this has been a really short uh, section compared to some others. Will you go away on your own? You're kind of trapping me here. Um, maybe this is the difficult part, returning from the final mission. But it's all about setting people at ease. Each of these missions has been not only about rendering areas safe, but also about sort of healing old wounds. I mean, even in the case of the researcher, where her problems were more current, there was still the matter of her sister. I wonder if there isn't more we can do visiting each of these people. If there isn't maybe some things I forgot to do with the researcher. I should definitely want to hear about some of the stuff we're finding, but I have the final creature corpse. You drop the large, bloodied carcass in front of the airman. His eyes fill with sadistic delight. He bends down and plunges his knife into the soft flesh. It falls away before the blade, revealing a glint of metal. With a sickening tear, he wrests it from where it was embedded in the flesh of the creature. He holds it aloft. You recognize it as a necklace, glistening in gore. Maybe the same one we read about before? Well, fisherman, it's unfortunate last. This ought to fetch a decent price from the right collector. Here, why don't you take it? A large and ornate necklace. Ivory teardrops flank the central setting. An emerald wrapped by four cresting waves. It's gorgeous. And it's also our objective. He stands back from the corpse. A melancholic look comes over his face. And now... Well, oh, that's that, I suppose. What will you do now? I can't say for sure. I thought I'd be asking you for an escort away from this place, but this has become somewhat of a home for me. It doesn't feel right to leave my brothers here. I think I'll stay a while longer. In the meantime, I can make up some special bait for you. It ought to help you with your fishing. Uh, okay, uh, can you make some for me? Here. This was left over from the other bait we made. A small portion of bait can be used to attract all manner of nearby species. Okay, what does that do for us? We can toss bait overboard to bring the species to us. That's so cool. And you can make some fresh stuff, but I'll need to give you some ingredients. Uh, okay. Let me just grind these up, won't be a moment, and there we go. Ah, even still it's introducing new mechanics. They go crazy for that stuff. Day, night, doesn't seem to matter. All sorts of fish usually show up. Uh, I love how, even though, well, presumably we're in the middle of this game now, it still hasn't stopped teaching us new things and giving us new abilities. Really, it's a matter of... Well, I feel like something I've been wondering about this entire time is do we get to continue after we've gotten all these relics? And I'm starting to think that the gameplay here is so fun and varied, and the location's so varied, with so much to see and explore. There's got to be more afterwards. I think that the whole campaign is just one big tutorial, really, to introduce us to, me to the mechanics steadily. Right after, of course, we buy ourselves a new crab pot and drop it over the side here. We've got stuff all over the place, including over at, what was the name of the place that I can never remember? Stellar Basin. 
We've got a crab pot there waiting to collect and see what we got, and we've still continued to neglect discovering new species. Uh, but here, there we go. We can drop this. I'll listen to that. This soundtrack sounds almost like something out of, like, Indiana Jones sometimes. Uh, when it's not being creepy and unnerving fog and rainstorm music. But I think before I go, I'm just going to continue my exploration, see if I can't find maybe just a couple more of these dog tags. Uh, here's another around the back of the island. Must be something we can find here, and some materials to dredge. The wreckage of an old fighter plane lies buried deep in the sand. Yep, and we find a worn gold ring. Uh, we'll keep that in case the airman wants it. The dog tags, which he definitely wants, and another research part. Certainly worthwhile. Man, you, you built the sign right there. Come on. Oh, and another one right over here. Oh, we are going to be swimming in research parts, but I guess we probably already unlocked that one from the other side, have we? Hey there. I found some more dog tags. Can I maybe also give you this? No. I kind of figured you'd want it. Okay. Thank you. And here we go. Alright, goodbye. And maybe we'll be able to find more somewhere, but that's pretty good so far. I now have a grand total of seven research parts. Uh, which means we now have things to burn. So I'm thinking what we do is do that. Do that. That way we can get that awesome rod. And that'll be our next purchase. And we even have a little bit to... I think we should start researching more of these crab pots. That way we can see what's further down the chain. I mean, we've really neglected crab fishing. And there's us burning all that, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. So now we buy this thing for 540, wow. And we can skip sleep and get this done. And we now have a combined fishing speed of 200%, which we get an achievement for. But I think I'm about ready to return home now. And look, we... Does that mean we can fish everywhere? Alright, well, we've made certainly significant upgrades to our vessel in this episode. And we are now a lean, mean fishing machine. I think we can catch just about everything. The only thing we can't do right now is uh, trawling. Well, I can do a little trawling. Actually, you know what? I think I'll stick around for another day and maybe see if I can't uh, maybe find a little bit of exotic crab species. I mean, would that be too much to ask? I'll be honest, I just kind of like hanging out here. Now, for those of you who have been yelling at me to do certain things, this is actually... Ooh, wow, we've got some big species here. For those of you who have been yelling at me to do some of these things that I'm doing and some things that I'm not doing, uh, I actually have not even uploaded the first part yet. Uh, the first part isn't... You're not going to see it for like four or five days after this recording of episode four. That's how much fun I've been having with this game. I just can't wait. Uh, Alright, giant mud crab. Highly cannibalistic. These crabs have been known to devour their soft-shelled brothers after molting. And horseshoe crab. It looks freakish and unnatural, but this ancient relic of the past sells well. Horseshoe crabs are cool. I remember I was on like a preschool trip to the beach one year, and uh, I found one on the beach, and I thought that is like the scariest slash coolest thing I've ever seen. But we can see what you guys sell for. Wow, a $58 crab. And 15 on you guys. Tell you what, it's a long way home, and I did sort of pledge to myself that I would be showing some more low-down sailing views. Uh, particularly because I'm starting to realize that it's very difficult to grab thumbnails for this game with a wide view and lots of UI. Why don't we try 
that teleport. Teleport yourself back to where it all began. We were warned about doing this, unless it was an absolute emergency. But let's see what it does. And we explode! Traversal long distance using manifest. Okay, well... Hey, bud! <laughs> Imagine that guy is just, like, sitting on his porch, spills his tea as I pop into existence. Uh, does that do bad things to my inventory? No, thankfully not. Okay, well, I've got something for you. You enter the house, carrying the ornate necklace. The collector recognizes it almost immediately. An excellent find. It demands pride of place in my collection. He sweeps aside some scraps on a dusty table, candle wax pooling in its corners. He places the necklace carefully in the clearing. And I suppose you'll be demanding recompense as well. Yeah, what do you think this is? Once more, he opens the book, dust pouring from the pages as he reads aloud. You begin to feel weak, but you're rooted to the spot, knees on the verge of buckling. As he finishes speaking, you feel blood rushing back to your legs. A strange feeling of power grows in your chest. We're so close. One more remains. I loathe to suggest it, but the abyssal plane on the approach to Devil's Spine is a likely candidate. See what you can find. I'll mark a location on your map where you can begin your search. Anything else? How do you know where these relics are? I largely don't, but I read the seas. I see the swells that give shape to the formless. I hear the waves that whisper secrets to their witnesses. And I speak to the currents that hold a memory of all that they claim. Are you human? Your inquiry is met with a piercing gaze. Why, of course. As human as you are. That's not a satisfying answer. This phrase instantly calls the closest shoal of fish, readying them for swift reaping. It can be heard from a great distance, so you need not be close to your victims. But the population is unlikely to recover from such vile trauma. Use it sparingly, so it permanently kills off an area. Wow, that is... Of everything we've gotten so far, that is the one that is truly the most cursed. And even as you seem to be more jovial, more friendly with me... Well, my fear of you is growing. And I get the impression that maybe this isn't a good thing we've done. Well, I've got more places to explore, and... We'll certainly be checking out some of these smaller islands more, and checking our crab traps, before we go any further. But in the meantime, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.